today, I figured we'd give you guys a bit of a boat tour. I can't pass the salt. And show you why we're specifically on this catamaran for the week. It has been an amazing week. It's been an awesome way to bring in the new year. We have learned so much about how hybrid boats work. It's been really cool to be on one for a whole week and not just get sort of a dockside tour of one. And comparing it to the Bali we were on last week with all of our patrons, it's been a really cool experience. These boats are amazing. It's massive for just the five of us. It really is. <laughs> it's been a really fun week. Step into my office. So we are in the engine room. This is a starboard engine room, but it's mirrored on the port side. While we're here on anchor, I figured it'd be a good time to sort of show you what's in here. Just forward of me is a 30 kilowatt Bellmarine drive master because this catamaran is a hybrid electric, which is why we're here for the week. Sailing it around, checking out the systems, seeing how it works and sort of comparing it and contrasting it to some of the other boats we've been on. Uh, including the Bali we were on just last week, which was all diesel. So starting with the propeller, it has a gory folding propeller, just like the one we had on our first Ocean Bolt. And it's a shaft drive, which means it's not gonna get very good regen anyway, but because this boat's in the charter fleet, they've actually programmed the regen to be off because the distances between anchorages here in the BVIs is so short that you're not gonna be sailing long enough to get any viable regen anyway. But with a shaft drive system, and a folding propeller on a boat that sails the way this one does, you're not really gonna get much regen anyway, which is why there's a giant 22 kilowatt generator right here. And there's another one on the other side. This boat's set up so that after about five minutes of motoring at 150 amps, or if the batteries drop down to 35%, these generators turn on. These are heavily modified Fisher Panda generators. These boxes are really well insulated and have got really good rubber isolators down here. And all of this insulation keeps the noise and vibration away from the cabin. When these things are on, we can barely, barely hear them. The cooling system for the electric motor is actually louder than the generator. And the air conditioners and the water maker are definitely louder than the generator. So that's not really much of a concern. But to be honest, the diesels running on the Bali weren't really that loud either. And so these engine rooms, especially on catamarans, since they're all the way aft and well insulated and isolated from the main cabin, they don't really create that much noise anyway. However, they do create diesel exhaust, which when you're on anchor, the wind kind of churns up around the back of the catamaran. And oftentimes that smell of diesel exhaust actually goes back inside. So keeping the windows open when we're on anchor and the generators were running meant that we were definitely smelling uh, diesel exhaust, which kind of, at least to us and Bo and Brandy, kind of ruins the whole quiet night on anchor. Motoring full speed, we were able to get about seven and a half knots or so, maybe closer to eight knots of speed through the water but the generators can't keep up with that load. So we have to back it off just a little bit. Um, so when the generators are on motoring continuously until we run out of diesel, uh, we could motor at around six and a half ish knots, maybe seven, depending on the wind and sea state. Uh, so obviously getting a sail up and motor sailing is gonna help a lot because this catamaran could definitely sail faster than that. It's capable of double digits, no problem, but not under motor. These Bellmarine shaft drives are 30 kilowatts each and they are running at 144 volt DC. So these generators are spinning out AC power, but that is uh, rectified to DC. And so the motor battery bank on this boat is 144 volt DC, and they have two battery banks, one for each side, and those are combined together so that they can charge at the same time from these two generators. The cool part is these generators are massive. So when the batteries do get down to 35%, the generators kick on for about an hour and a half to two hours and the battery bank is charged back up to 90 and then they shut back off again. So it hasn't been too bad. It's all automated. Um, it's enough batteries to last us all night running our air cons and like keeping the boat running and all the seven refrigerators running. And then in the morning, the generators kick on usually around breakfast for two hours and then they're off. 
Um, and while we're sailing, they're off. Uh, if we're motoring a little bit, they turn on. And usually when we get into an anchorage at night, um, they're on for another two hours to charge up before we go to bed. So these two generators are running for about four hours a day each just to keep this boat running with the four of us on it. We purposely decided not to sort of try to sail this boat as an all electric because it's just really not set up for that. Um, the systems on board, the lights, the refrigerators, the water maker, motoring, like all of that just consumes so much power that we weren't going to be able to sail it all electric without basically shutting the whole boat off. So the point of this trip for us was mainly to experience a hybrid boat similar to the Bali we were on last week and have a better understanding of like what it's like to operate a hybrid electric catamaran. Mm. Underneath this giant cockpit table in the pedestal that holds it up is the house batteries. This boat runs at 24 volts for all of the house loads. So the lights and the radios and the chart plotter and all that. Uh, and they are stored underneath here. Ta -da! What do we got in here? It looks like there's a four big Victron lithium ion batteries under here probably 12 volts each wired together in groups to make them 24 volt. And they are all charged by the 144 volt motor bank, which is in the forward cockpit. And they're using uh, Victron MPPT solar controllers to charge it. So the house bank is pretty much floating at 100% all the time because it's getting charged off of the motor bank, which is then charged off of the generators. This boat does have a little bit of solar on the roof, but I don't think it does much because it's usually shaded by the boom. So the benefit of a system like this, where you have a dedicated motor bank and then a dedicated house bank and one charges the other, is that unlike on UMA, if our main house bank goes flat because there's a weird BMS issue or they're dead or for whatever reason, the motor bank goes flat, you still have a bunch of power left to run your chart plotter, your radio, your EPIRB, your navigation, your depth sounder, your windlass, all the things you need to like safely get the boat stopped. Um, so if something like that ever happened on our boat, we just have the one motor bank at 48 volts and everything, all of our house loads are run off of DC converters. So the one or two times that our batteries have gone flat, the whole boat goes dead which because our boat's smaller and we're good sailors, it's never really been an issue because we can sail on to anchor and sort it out later. But on a boat like this, it would be kind of a big deal if you couldn't call the VHF and call for help. So separating those two battery systems, although it adds complication to the system, it also does provide a decent amount of redundancy uh, if something goes wrong. Here is some more electrical tidbits behind door number three. In this locker, it looks like we've got a 12 volt main battery and it's an AGM battery. So that's probably running a few of the remaining 12 volt systems on this boat that couldn't be 24 volts. Uh, I'm not sure what they are, but there's always something that doesn't come in 24 volts or 48 volts. Uh, maybe the VHF radio or something like that. But also in here are the big MPPT charge controllers that are taking that DC current from the 144 volt DC uh, propulsion bank and charging the house bank with it. So these two big Victron MPPT controllers are what's keeping the house bank fully charged and they are toasty. They're running about three and a half kilowatts at all times. Underneath this hatch in the Ford lounge are the main propulsion batteries. They're rigged at 144 volt DC each bank, and I believe the banks are 22 kilowatt hours each. So this boat's propulsion system is about 44 kilowatt hours, which means motoring at six and a half knots, we can motor for about an hour. Uh, but just like our boat, as soon as you start bringing those throttles back, it decreases parabolically. And at four knots, you can motor significantly longer um, but like we mentioned earlier, the generators are programmed to kick on quite quickly after about five minutes. So they never really let the batteries get too low. 
Although if this was an owner's boat, you could definitely change that. These batteries are MG lithium iron phosphate. Uh, they're very similar to the Victron batteries that the house bank is run off of. These ones are just wired in a long string in a series to get that voltage up to run the Bellmarine motors. This is the whole electronics distribution panel and behind it are all the breakers that run this boat. And I must say they actually did a really good job wiring this boat. It looks great. It's clean, it's organized, it's labeled, uh, it's redundant and it's relatively well organized and laid out in this panel. So on the left side, these are all of the 12 and 24 volt breakers that run the basic things like the bilge pumps and the water heaters and you know bow thruster, windlass, furler. Uh, the main stuff you wanna switch on and off while you're switching the boat from anchoring to sailing and back and forth. It also has two Quattro inverters, a 120 volt and a 230 volt. I believe the 230 volt is so you can charge when you're plugged into the dock and the 120 is to distribute 120 AC to all the appliances on this boat. So we like seeing that kind of redundancy between the 120 AC and 230 AC because it means you can have a much more diverse range of appliances on the, on board. And if you're traveling internationally, you can just keep up to date because there's different voltages in different com countries and being able to charge on both makes a huge difference. On the right side of this panel, is the Victron displays that show the propulsion bank on the left and the house bank on the right. And these are the same display we have on our boat. So you can see AC input, AC loads, if it's the inverter chargers on or off and the percentage and battery state, how much you're discharging, how much you're charging, all that. Uh, there's no tank monitoring on these ones. That's done over here, the black water tank and the fresh water tanks are all on a C zone system. So we can actually see that from the chart plotter. Uh, there are also the 12 volt house bank, 24 volt house bank, and the 144 propulsion emergency stop switch are all here, as well as the two generator panels are up top. So you can start each one individually, although they're programmed to auto start, like we explained earlier. They also have the water maker control panel in here. They've really simplified it. So you just push and hold these two switches for 10 seconds. The water maker turns on, push this switch, it turns off, does an auto fresh water flush. Um, so there's a lot of programming and a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, but this really simplifies a system for charter boat uh, crews that don't necessarily need to know all the ins and outs of how these systems work. They just need to push a button. And the coolest part is behind the panels is where all the real breakers are. That's a really clean install system. Everything is well organized. Everything is well labeled. It's all in conduit and uh, it's really easy to source and figure out if there is an issue or if you've tripped a breaker. Behind this panel are all of the AC breakers. So every breaker you see in there is just for an AC circuit. And behind the starboard panel is where all of the DC circuit breakers are. And there are quite a few of them. Another cool thing about this boat is it has an interior don't want to call it a helm station because there's no actual helm but since it's a catamaran you can drive it with the throttles and there's autopilot control so it's an interior control station it's not quite a nav station because you can't put a chart down um, but it's nice to have controls down here you've got a throttle control and the bell marine screen so that you can actually use these throttles to anchor uh, or pick up a mooring line where you have easier sight to the bow and easier communication with the person on the windlass um, and it's also got a big screen down here so you can see your charts and see your victron stuff and this boat's also set up a sea zone, which means you can control all of your lights and monitor your tanks from any of these two chart plotters, which is quite convenient. Right now I am in our main cabin, which there are a total of six double cabins on this boat, plus two single cabins up on the bow, which are usually the crew members cabins. So in total, this boat can sleep, I believe 14 people which is perfect for a charter boat. In each cabin, you have a sink and a mirror inside of the cabin, and then you have a head, which is just basically the toilet and a shower space. And each cabin layout is pretty much the same layout. Maybe some are a little bit bigger than others, but for the most part, it's about the same. Um, so now we're gonna head into the main area. So in the middle between the halls, you have the salon area, which is the living space um, with a huge couch and the rest of the space is basically an entire kitchen. I never thought that I would have kitchen space envy on our boat, 
but then I stepped here and it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous there are three sinks total uh, two dishwashers seven refrigerators two ice makers and tons of storage space I feel like this is a storage space underneath here is it okay. I think there's storage space and it was this oh yeah more storage so because this boat was designed to be a charter, we found some interesting features of how it was laid out. For example, this boat was designed to have a captain and a cook plus the guest, right? So the galley and the helm station are completely separated from where the guests would be hanging out. And in our situation where we are the captain and we are the cook of our boat together, we find ourselves sitting and all sorts of different positions because we always wanted to interact with each other while Maya's cooking, we're all sitting on a counter talking to her or sitting backwards on the couch because the couch is facing the opposite way. And then same with the helm station up there, like usually the captain's upstairs and everybody else is downstairs or hanging out, which if one of us is upstairs, usually all of us go upstairs. It's hard to design a boat for charter and have that become an owner's boat because it's two different purposes. It needs to be designed completely differently. An owner's hall would be completely different. It doesn't have to sleep 14 people unless you have a giant family. And usually things would be more inclusive versus a charter like this one where things are separated and the crew quarters are very separate from all the other cabins. Um, just something that we've noticed. So aft of the living space is another living space, but this one is the dining room because guess what? We have the biggest table I think I've ever seen on anything. A boat, a house, I think this is the biggest in this corridor too. Do you want to demonstrate how big it is? This is a demonstration of how big it is. <laughs> I have to time myself to go around. It is massive. It is massive. I can't pass the salt. Oh, and one more thing. There's another galley plus another ice maker, plus two more fridges, and another sink, <laughs> and a grill, which is cool, actually. I, I like having the grill here. It's nice. We haven't had much experience on Catarin, but one thing that we've noticed from last week and from this week is I like the openness of the space. So when you are hanging out out here, you can open everything and you're basically part of outside versus on the mono hall, unless you have a giant boat that you have space outside, usually you're inside usually you're in the cabin and you're separated from the outside world which i guess that would be one of the advantage that i personally see on a catamaran is this openness um, but wait there's more mm. <laughs> follow me here is in this lovely space we are on the flybridge this is where the whole control station is. There's a little bit of a helm station inside, but this is where the captain, the person at the helm, operates the boat, which personally, it's a bit high. One thing that I do like about the catamaran and something that intimidated me at first is for how big it is, it's actually quite easy to operate. You can flip the boat on itself, basically do a 360 turn. One thing that is hard on our boat, on the monohull, is covering. Because on the model hall, the bow takes, unless you have a bow thruster, is hard to stay in place. This one, you just like, you just balance it so easily. It's quite nice. So right next to the helm station, you have all your lines that you need on this boat. Everything comes back to here, which is actually pretty nice because we've seen boats where, you know, if you tack, you have to have somebody on one side of the hall and, the, and somebody else on the way on the other side. And you have to run between the two if you're just like shorthanded. But on this boat, Everything is right here. Auto lines just drop right in this bucket. And you have three electric winches, which is really nice because they're just operated by buttons. The head sail is operated by a button operated roller furler, which is kind of mind blowing that it, that even exists. But yeah, it's a pretty simple process. Um, I think two people can easily sail this boat, no problem. And a third person at the bow to catch the lines. How can I forget the best part of the boat? Halloween. All right, this is my favorite part of this boat. Another lounging area. <laughs> That's like what, 
five now? At least. <laughs> Some catamarans only have trampolines and other catamarans like the Bali that we were in last week only have a lounging area. What's cool about this one is it's both. You can have the best of both worlds. You have the trampoline so you can easily like operate the lines and get ready to drop anchor. Right behind the trampoline you still have another lounging area so you can enjoy the show that's happening in front of us at the comfort of your cushion. <laughs> to demonstrate, we have our friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's bright and early, almost seven o'clock in the morning, and we are on our way back to the marina because today is our last day with the boat. We have to get it back, but. Main seals up and the furler doesn't work. Yeah, the push button to get the head sail up doesn't work, and we're looking for the breaker. Because if you trip a breaker, the sail doesn't furl. Which I could foresee being an issue if you ever needed to reef in the middle of like some bad weather and the head sail didn't unfurl or it didn't furl, that'd be a problem. Forty minutes left with this boat. BVI's have been awesome. The weather's been awesome. It's nice to get a suntan again and hang out with good friends. Absolutely. But I am super excited now to get back to Italy, get back to our boat yes. and put our boat together again so that we can go sailing because it's it's really cool to be able to charter a boat for a week with friends and enjoy the time. But at, at the end of the day, we love the fact that we have our own boat, that we can enjoy the sunsets at our own pace as well. We don't have well. to give it back at the end of a week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But I must say, like, I very much enjoyed the comfort that this boat came with. Hot showers and air conditioning every night um, can't be understated. It's, I don't think we could put a air conditioning. I mean, we could put air conditioning on our boat. Like a, like a system. heat pump? Yeah, be a smaller air conditioner too. Won't be, won't have any dishwashers though. Definitely not two. We got two <laughs> dishwashers on board. <laughs> Manual, analog dishwasher. Manual dishwasher. Uh, we've got to take this boat back and return it and then back to boat work, getting Uma to float again. So until then, cheers. We also never did figure out how to get the roller for a little work, so we've just been sort of motor sailing with the uh, the mainsail up downwind, um, but it was only three hours, so. We did find that there is a manual override on it, though. You can get a winch handle and kind of grind it back in, which is good, but we're almost back. So this adventure is coming to a close, sadly, but that's life with a charter boat. You only get it for a week. We made it back. We're just waiting for them to come Pick up take over the controls vessels. so we could dock this thing. Uh, Cause they want, they don't want us docking the boat, which is fine. They're not answering though. So, you I guess. I mean, I can hover all day, but I mean, it'd be nice if somebody came. I mean, you're gonna have to came. swim to shore then. <laughs> 